Hello, this video is going to show how we can achieve functional safety using CMake and the Clang compiler. Now, in this particular case, I'm using this board. It's a Cortex M7 and I'm connecting to it using Sega J-Link. Now here I have a simple project and I've used CMake. And as we can see, I have a list of my source files. And I also have a CMake file where you can see here that we're using the ARM Clang compiler. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check I can actually build. So let's go into here and I'm going to invoke CMake. And as we can see, this is now successfully built and I've now got an executable which I could run. So I'm going to run this using the Sega Ozone. So first of all, let's just connect to the target. And yes, I'm going to do that. So that's now downloaded using JLink. And I should now be able to step through my program and debug it. OK, so it's a simple program. But what I'm interested in doing is, first of all, I want to be able to analyze this source code and see, well, is it compliant to a standard such as Misera? I'd like to be able to look at the code and see, well, is it over complex? Measure metrics like the cyclomatic complexity. I'd then like to be able to execute the code just like I'm doing now. And at the end, find out, well, how much of this code have I actually executed? And then I probably won't have 100%. And so I'll try and execute the code using unit testing in order to be able to complement that coverage. So let's close this down. And first of all, I want to be able to analyze the code. So we've got a build.bat. So let's run that. But this time, let's run it using the build import. So the build import, I'm going to set it up to run the same build.bat. And as it runs, we're going to be able to capture what CMake is doing. And we can then analyze the results. And as we can see here, we found an executable. We found two source files. We have found a preprocessor symbol, as well as an include path. So we have everything we need now in order to be able to open this with TB Vision and start analyzing it. Well, to save time, I've already done that. I've got the project here. And so I can go and do a code review. In this particular case, we can see, well, the code is not compliant. We have a number of violations here. Well, let's double click on one particular violation. And this takes me to my editor. And I can see, yes, I've started to define with underscore. That's going to be pretty easy to, to fix. So let's close that down and come back here. Right. So next, let's take a look at the quality of the code. Let's take a look at a system call graph. And the system call graph is showing us all the functions. We can see how they're interconnected. And some are color coded to show us this is a system call. And I can put this into various different views. For instance, we can look at the maintainability view and I can sort and rapidly find the function that has the highest cyclomatic complexity. So integer to ASCII has a value of nine. Well, let's view that graphically with a flow graph. So here we can see a flow graph. And if I click on a block of code, we can see the corresponding block over here. Where's this block? Well, that corresponds to this graphical block here. Now, what I'd like to be able to do is to execute the code and find out, well, which parts of this code have we executed? And more importantly, which parts have we not executed? So I'm going to instrument the source code and I can put probes at the start of a block and probe at the end of the block in order to be able to understand have we executed this block of code or not. Right, let's put that to one side. And I'm going to go back into TB Vision. I shouldn't have closed that down. Let's just open it again. And I'm now going to perform the dynamic analysis. So this is now going to instrument the source code. It's now performing the build using CMake. It's now executing on the target using GDB over the JLink. I've got the results back. And so we should be able to see, well, what coverage have we obtained? So let's go to a system call graph. And this time, the call graph, we can put it into a, a coverage view. And we can see that uh, we've got pretty good coverage. 
So integer to ASCII is the only function where we haven't got 100% coverage. What coverage do we get? Well, we can view that graphically and see very clearly that we haven't executed all these blocks of code here. There are also some branches that are red because we haven't executed these particular branches, but we've not executed this because we've never had a value that's less than 180. So if I want to get full coverage on this, I could use our unit testing tool tbrun in order to do that. So let's start tbrun and wait for this to open. And now I'm going to load a sequence that I've created previously. So we'll load the sequence for the integer to ASCII function. Here we can see we have a number of test cases with an appropriate description. And over here we can see we have inputs and importantly, the expected outputs. So let's go and execute this. So it's going to generate a harness. Again, it's used the CMake to build the project. It's downloading to the target again using the JLink and GDB. We've got the results off the target and we can see most importantly, the tests have passed. So with these inputs, we did get these expected outputs. And then finally, we should be able to take a look at this function integer to ASCII. And we can see we now have 100% statement coverage, branch decision coverage and MCDC. So hopefully that's given you an overview of how we can achieve functional safety using CMake and Clang. And if you'd like more information, then please don't hesitate to contact us at LDRay. Thank you.